Mr. Sams, you are wearing a baseball helmet. I am, yeah. You know, last uh, few times ago, I forgot to wear my safety glasses, and I, you know, you give me a pretty hard time about that. So I thought I'd yeah. be prepared today. A little extra safety gear. You That's never know true. what's going to happen but in the camera. Your eyes aren't protected. I could still like shoot acid into your eyeballs. So. Oh. Something like so that. I need goggles underneath my helmet. Yeah. Well, yeah. we're we're not really in a in a chemical oriented unit. More of That's a uh, physical oriented That's unit. So point. I thought I'd probably be okay. Okay. All right. So we'll see who comes out all right here. I got the I helmet on. Probably, you got the goggles. Yeah, I think we should probably do that. Okay. okay. All right, folks. Today we're going to talk about periodic trends. Mm -hmm. I love periodic trends because they happen periodically. And they're trendy. And they're trendy. Yeah. I see. We have three things to talk about: atomic size. Ionization energy and electron affinity. Yeah. Woo! So let's get rocking on this. Okay, first of all, I want to talk about size. Yeah. Atomic size, what does that mean? Uh, that's the size of an atom. Yeah, that makes sense. The yeah. size of an atomic size. Yeah. The size of an atom. It totally like, makes sense, doesn't it? All right, so what determines the size of an atom? Uh, usually how much stuff is in the atom. Stuff. Now, what kind of stuff do you find in it? Well, atom? we've got protons. Yeah, and all We've got mm -hmm. neutrons. Neutrons. And we've got electrons. Electrons. But you know only one of those indicates size. Yeah, that's the electrons. Because the protons and neutrons, they're really densely packed in the nucleus. So that, I mean, frankly, that's hardly any of the actual space that the atom is occupying. And it really, folks, it's the outermost electrons that determine the size. Because yep. they are the furthest from the nucleus. They are the edge of the sphere, if you will. Think about an atom as a sphere. So, but some atoms, now atoms are small. They are very really, small. Really, really small. Mm. How many atoms in an orange? Um, lots. Lots. The same thing. You have to blow the orange up to the size of the? Earth. Earth. And then the atoms would then be? The size of an orange. No, actually the size of cherries. Cherries. Oh, wrong yeah. fruit. Yeah, oh well, but close, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, but some atoms are, now what we're talking about today is not the size of atoms, just how incredibly small they are, but we're actually going to compare the size of one atom to the size of another atom. You see, some atoms are tiny, they're all tiny, but some are uber tiny, and some are bigger than others. So what we're trying to do is figure out which atom is the biggest compared to the rest. Yep. Now there's a trend that helps us to understand that. Okay, so let's take a look at um, this particular chart right here that helps us get a, uh, a picture of which atoms are bigger. Yeah, now the easy one is as you go down in a family, they get bigger. So if you look going down here, we've got, this is this this is uh, mirrors the periodic table. Lithium and sodium and potassium and rubidium are all the first row of elements, the mm -hmm. alkali metals, and, and hydrogen, of course, too. And, of course, as you went down, you went from 37, I think this is picometers, up to 265 picometers. And that's true in every column. So if you look at the family of nitrogen, he's 70, 110, 121, 141, 155. So that, that makes sense, yeah. doesn't it? Mm -hmm. and, and they're getting bigger because we're as we go down, we're adding energy levels. As we add energy levels, the electrons get further away from the nucleus. Another way to think of that, folks, is what you're essentially adding is you're adding another shell. All right, you have, I mean, we've learned electron configurations. Mm -hmm. you know, if you look, say, from hydrogen, that's the 1s shell. And when you jump to lithium, this would be the 2s shell. All right, this would be 1s1 and 2s1. Do you get the idea? But we have a particular issue here. What's, what's the thing that's kind of odd, Mr. Sanders? Well, as we go to the right, even though we're adding more electrons, they're getting smaller. Yeah, I notice that the hydrogen here is 37 and the helium is 32. Two. And then in the, in the second row here, lithium 152, 113, 88, 77, 70. And you can smaller. see they typically get smaller. A few exceptions here. A little here. bit of exception. But pre pretty much the general trend, it's not a you know, far and fast rule, is they get smaller. Now, that's kind of an odd thing. Now, let me go back and tell you, the, my old high school chemistry teacher, she had a way to explain this. She called it the girdle theory. Hmm. Yeah, what's a girdle? Uh, I think it kind of squishes stuff. Like right. B body parts. Yeah, so, so, so females. Makes you look skinnier than you really are. Yeah, you get the idea. So, so let's say that you are um, a young lady who maybe likes um, chocolate. Okay. And you love chocolate. Chocolate. Mm. In fact, it's about Valentine's Day, and there's like all this chocolate stuff going mm. on. So you, so you eat chocolate. And so what happens, of course, as you eat chocolate? Um, well, if you eat too much chocolate, you uh, get a little on the larger side. Well, actually, in this case, you're going to get more massive. Okay. And as you get more massive, your girdle will squish you in a little tighter because oh, you can yeah. cinch it better. Yeah. So as you get more and more massive... Because actually, one other point here, on the as you go across the periodic table here, the um, elements are getting heavier. Yeah, we're adding protons because the atomic number is going so up. So, for example, lithium has an atomic mass of 7, and beryllium is, I think it's 9, isn't it right? 
I think it's 9 or maybe 10, whatever. Let's say it's 10 or whatever. So it gets high, heavier, where neon, I believe, has uh, an atomic mass of 20. 20, 21, maybe, yeah. 20 or 21. And so it, you go from 7 to 20. So think of a 7-pound girl. That's really light or whatever, but you get the idea. You get, And she gets heavier and heavier and heavier. She gets to 20 pounds. But she gets smaller and smaller because her girdle gets tighter and tighter and tighter. Uh. But then one day, she just reaches that point where... The girdle can't hold it yeah, anymore. you got to go from a size 4 to a size 5. She's got to get the bigger girdle. Yeah. yeah, and so she goes from a size, let's call this size 1 girdle, size 2 girdle, size 3 girdle. She jumps to a size 3 girdle, and they've, everything just kind of flows out. Mm. And then she becomes sodium. And then, of course, it gets tighter as she keeps eating chocolate. I don't know. Does it work for you? It sure, it works for me. Yeah. Now, the big question, what we actually want to answer, the, does that sound right? The yeah. big question we want to answer is, why does this occur? Yeah. Okay. By the way, if you're ever asked to explain these on like the AP test, do Probably not talk about girdles and chocolate, okay? <laughs> talk <laughs> about what happens in yeah. terms of protons and electrons, which is what we're going to explain to you now. So this is the real explanation <laughs> and not the Bergmanian girdle, girdle theory. Okay. <laughs> so this is the real one. Listen very carefully. Yes. All right. So what's going on as you're going down, and I think we've already explained this, as you're going down on the periodic table, what happens is you're adding energy sublevels yep. or shells or orbitals. So the more it? shells, the bigger you are. More shells, you get bigger. That one's easy. So the hard one to explain is what happens as you go to the right. So let's go to a new screen and look at this. So as you are going from, let's say, from, let's go from the sodium family. Okay. So let's take the element sodium with his 11 protons and 11 electrons. And he has a particular size. Right. Okay. Now, the actually, let's draw it this way. The 11 protons are in the center, and then you've got, um, you know, 11 protons on the outside. Electrons. Electrons, pardon me, on the outside. And then the next element after that is magnesium. And we know magnesium is a little smaller, not a whole lot smaller. He has 12 protons and uh, 12 electrons in the outer shell. Now, why does it get smaller when we sort of go from here to here? Well, in the outer shell, they're, they're both in the 3s sublevel on the, in that outer shell. So those electrons are, are just as likely to be anywhere in that 3s as the other electrons Correct. in that shell. So the sodium electrons and the magnesium electrons, they're in the same space where they could be. But magnesium has one more proton in the nucleus. As a result, it's going to attract the electrons closer to itself. That's the key thing, folks, to understand is adding one more proton Basically, think of it like a magnet. You guys played with magnets when you were kids, probably, or just even in science classes. Um, and when is a magnet strongest? When it's closest to the thing you're attracting it to. Right, so if I've got, you know, I put the opposite sides of a magnet. This is, is more attractive than, say, this. If I had the same two magnets. But what I've done is I've essentially made the magnet in the center stronger. It's now have a 12 strength versus 11 strength. And so he can hold on, hold on to the same electron cloud, um, the 3s cloud of mm -hmm. electrons, with an additional strength, which causes it to shrink. Yep, pull it in closer. And then when you go to the next element, which would be a smaller yet, you'd have 13 protons boron. and 13 Not electrons. Boron. Aluminum, sorry. It's aluminum, yeah. And again, I've increased the strength of the centerpiece of the of the magnet yep. by one level, if one proton, which shrinks it a little bit more, and then you get smaller and smaller and smaller as you go across that particular row. And that's really why it's going. You're increasing, big fancy word, you're increasing the nuclear charge. The charge of the protons by adding an additional proton. Yep. Make sense? Yeah, there it is. Okay. Second topic we're going to talk today is we're going to talk about something called ionization energy. Now, what is ionization energy? That's the energy required to remove an electron from the energy outermost energy level. Energy to remove one electron from an atom. Now, I think, Mr. It's Sams, that... Technically, in its gaseous state, too. Yeah, right? that's true. In the yeah. gaseous state. Yeah, that's actually important in a little bit later uh, podcast. Yeah. Okay, so it's in its gaseous state, and mm -hmm. so, you know, I think we should, like, um, show them a little bit more graphically okay. what ionization energy is. What okay. do you think? Sure. All right. Okay, now I have a feeling this is where uh, my helmet might help Mr. me Mr. Sims, why are you wearing that helmet? Oh, you know, I think well, you I'm need... 
to wear the safety glasses. I need safety Folks, glasses. don't you think he needs to wear the safety Probably glasses? safety glasses plus helmet. So I think he needs a safety glasses. Right. You're very tall. I, thank you. I do my best. <laughs> I'm short. Okay. Uh, Why are you holding uh, tennis balls? These are my Sanders? electrons. Oh, yeah. Electrons. So you're like an atom. I am. Oh, cool. And... I have a baseball bat. See, that's why I'm wearing my helmet. I saw that when I walked in, so I figured I better put something protective All right. on. I'm a little so, nervous. All right. So what are you going to do now? Well, I've got three electrons here, and I'm just going to kind of spin around. Okay, so okay. I'm going to spin around. Maybe right. you should spin around further back behind here. So further back here? Here, I'll spin around back here. Okay, so I get to hit you, right? You do. And when you hit me, what's going to happen? you're going to put some energy in, and I'm, well, I don't know. Let's see what happens. All right, let's see what happens. So people, I'm going to hit him. Ah! All right! Ah! Ooh, I lost an electron. Ah! Well, see now. Oh, what was that? That's like ionization energy. That's right. It? You put energy in, and I lost an electron. So that's the energy required to remove it. But now.